Yeah. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I do that, one, to get you talking, and two, to see what, you, what, what your thoughts are when we go through some of these, because some of you don't even know our rules, so that helps us out by you talking to me and then me explaining if it's correct or what we need to modify. So in order to check in, you have to have your UNCW ID. Where this comes into play is you will have the score sheet with you. So if somebody comes up and says, I want to play, and they're on that roster, you can literally have them sign right next to their name. If they're not on that roster, you need to send them to our supervisor, and they will need to add them. And then they will come back to you. What I don't want you to do is completely stop play and have them sign. Get it during a dead ball. The ball goes way away, hey, I'll take you, and you can sign in. Or you can hand them your clipboard real quick. You keep officiating, they hand it back in a dead ball period. You have to find out what works best for you. Um, check players for jewelry. If you ask the two in the back of the room, every time I've come out to watch them officiate, I have found somebody with jewelry. No rings, no earrings, no wristbands, nothing. This is tough because a lot more people don't wear shoes and socks in sand volleyball, so they have the ankle bracelets or anything like that that you see. It's not as big of a deal. We don't see people all come up with uh, tape or band-aids around their ears. If they do, ask them what's behind the tape. And if they're like, oh, my cat scratched me, may I see it? I got plenty more band-aids I can help you out. More than likely, sorry to the ladies in the room, it's a piercing. They've got to come out. While you officiate, we expect the same thing. No jewelry. So here's what a score sheet will look like. It'll actually have three columns here for game one, game two, and game three. So as you're keeping score, you tick the score off. Because we played a 15 with no cap. So whoever gets to 15 first wins. They flip sides. Play to 15. If the other team wins, then we play a third game of the rubber match. And then whoever wins that one wins the best out of three. So illegal equipment, no hats or jewelry. We actually allow hats for sand volleyball, um, but no jewelry. And they and don't worry about the closed-toed shoes. This is taken out of a lot of other things. But they cannot wear jeans, khaki, shorts, or anything like that. It has to be athletic attire. So if they come out and what I'm wearing, they can't play. Where can I change? The restrooms are right there, or they can come in the building and change. And all games are played at the gazebo courts. So a team will play with four. They can begin with as few as three. So they need to have at least three people there to start the game. If we're playing with Kodrek, it's two males, two females, or two and one. They can't play with three guys versus the other ones or three girls versus the other team. You've got to have at least one of each gender. Substitutions are made on your side. They're pretty easy. They can go in whenever they want after the ball is dead. They have to sub somebody out. What they can't do, what's your name? Noah. It, what we can't do is, I'm an awesome server. I serve, get five, six points. Noah subs in for me. I go out. The next person comes in. I can't sub in for that person to serve again. You've got to wait for that rotation to come back around. And we'll show you that here hopefully in just a minute or two. So when you do, uh, when you, when you do your coin toss, most of you don't carry coins around with you. I get that. So what you do is you go between the two captains, put your hand behind your back, say out of even one or two. I usually say one or two. And I put the number behind my back of what I have. If he guesses one and I have one behind my back, he gets the choice of serve, side, or receive. I always position myself between the two players. Because what I don't want, both of them stand there, one or two, and he says one, and I have two behind my back, and I'm like, oh, it was one. And he sees that I'm cheating for him already. So always stand between the players, a simple one or two. And then you'll go over, you have pregame, right? Or who has pregame? So Jared will go over how you actually do this and how you talk to the captains. If there's a third game, you will do another coin toss, and the visitor will call this toss, or the odd or even. Uh, I don't, don't do rock, paper, scissors, because somebody may cheat. Easy is just to do one or two odd even. Best two out of three, like I said, games to 15, win by two, no cap. So if we're at 15-15, somebody's got to get to 17. If we go 15-16, somebody's got to get to 17 or has to be to 18. So they've got to win by two. Each team gets one timeout per game if they really want it. Typically, they've, I've never seen a timeout called in my time here. But if they want it, give them 30 seconds. All right, timeout. They want to set up what they ever want and they want to do. They can do that. Rally scoring means every time the ball hits, 
in or out, somebody's getting a point. So you don't have to serve to gain a point. And there's a 45 minute time limit, which you'll start right after the captain's meeting concludes. So you go through your spiel, start the clock that we give you, it'll run down from 45. Once we hit the 45 minute limit, ball game over. If it's tied, next point wins, sudden death. If you're still in game two, heaven forbid you are, then you have to go from see where you are from there. Please don't be in game two yet. <clears throat> Each team will, will rotate clockwise to serve, and I'll show you here, on the, hopefully, I think it's the next slide. Each person has five seconds to serve the ball once you blow the whistle. So you look at it, make sure they're ready, blow the whistle, they have five seconds to serve the ball. They may throw the ball up and let it hit once without penalty. Second time results in a loss of serve, point to the other team, uh, the other team serves. Players may serve from any spot behind our lines. If you were here last year, you knew our lines were not very good. We have since installed anchors in the ground and have put actual red volleyball lines out there. So they are so much better than they have been in years past. You don't have to go out there and try to guess where lines are. They are anchored in the ground. I fought hard for this one, especially since we are officiating it only. It was very necessary. Yeah, it was very necessary. Last year they just put the lines out and no anchors. So it was even worse. So here's the alignment that they can have. Typically, this is what they have. Left front, right front, left back, right back. And they rotate in that clockwise. This person will always be the person that serves. So if they get five points, the other team gets one, they rotate, right front serves. What you'll see most of the time is people sub out in the right front and sub in to serve. It's what you see most of the time. If they decide they want to do a diamond, for whatever reason, let them, the back center will serve. Um, we don't have any back row attacks that, that may have been on the cruise sheet, but we don't have any back row attacks. Anybody can attack, anybody can do anything on sa in sand volleyball. But they, and they, don't, they don't even have to start this way, but that's just typically the way they set up. Each team gets three, hit, three hits per side on a rally. Blocking a spike is not counted as a hit. So if Jared goes to spike it and I go to block it and I jump up and I tip it, that doesn't count. I can tip that one, it can come down to me and I can bump it up. If your hand's above the net. If the contact's made above the net, that's a block. Now you're making two of this too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I can't jump. <laughs> if you block it above the net, or if you're like me and you block it below the net, they basically get another hit. So if they jump to block it, give them that. Give them that. Yeah, they are. They need to be tightened up a little bit. If a, correct, if a correct, correct team touches the ball three times and each gender is not one of those three touches, it's a, it's a point to their team. So if you're playing, if me, Jared, and Gabby are playing together, I touch it, Jared touches it, and then I touch it, we didn't fulfill the requirements. So when you're working a correct game, you should be thinking male, male, female, or female, male, male, whatever it is. So as long as you say both genders as they're hitting, we're fine. But if... There, um, if you don't say both genders and three hits, then it's a, a fault. If there are two hits, there, are, there is no rule in gender. So I could set it to Jared, he could spike it. Or two females could set and spike it to each other. If there's one hit, there's no rules. So it's only if there's three hits. So we're not going to penalize them if they take less than three hits. On the first ball of their net, the ball may touch... Um, the ball may touch the ball, man, my, my PA didn't look at this, may touch the person twice. So the first ball over the net, a spike or a serve. If I go to dig it out of, the, out of the ground and it hits me here and here and I didn't change my motion, it's legal. It's only the first ball played over each time on the net. So it could be a spike, could be the serve, whatever it is. As long as I don't go here and change my direction or go here and here, that's fine, as long as it's one continuous motion. If a player digs a ball and it hits uh, arms and straight into the shoulder, this is not a double hit. The player um, may touch your quote unquote center line. It's a guess. So if my center line is right here and my foot is, touches it, we're fine. But if I'm like here trying to get back under, I'm over the center line. It's a little bit more laxed in sand volleyball. Give them a little bit of lee leeway because they don't know where that center line is. But if they dive completely under the, the other side of the net, that's a, that's a center line infraction, the other team gets the ball. And that's just you touch the net and give the point. All right. 
This is where you come in now. What constitutes a double hit? When they put hits it twice. So it could be hit here, and then they go out and hit it again. They try to set it, and it sets here and then here. That's a double hit. So they touch it twice. The signal for that is just simply blow your whistle and do this to double hit, and then give the point. We'll talk about that in signals. Hitting the ball more than three times before it crosses the net. Anybody? <coughs> anybody? I swear, I'll stand up here and just... Hit the ball three times before it touches the net, before it crosses the net. One, two, hit it four more times. What is it? More than uh, three more times. times yeah. What's the, what do you think the signal for that one is? Hold up at four. Four. There you go. This is legal. This is not. Two hits by one person is not. So you just four and give the point. Um, and then touching the net with any body part while the ball is in play. We can't do that. It's a net violation. So if you go to spike the ball, you spike it, and you you wrap that net with that hand, like right here, or that arm, it's a net violation. The other team gets the point. We talked about center line violation. That's just crossing the center line. Describe a carrier lift. Open palms whenever you're going from the bottom of the ball. Open palm. From, you hit it up like this. You will see a lot of this. Because people stink at volleyball and they play sand volleyball. And then they go like this. My caveat to this is if it's not agreed, just don't call it. But yes, a lift is this, this. What else? A prolonged set. Basically, you come here and just go like that. Absolutely. The way I was taught to teach this is think of yourself as in six quadrants. One here, one across, and then one dividing right here. So if I carry from here to here, I carry two quadrants. That's a carry or lift. If I go from here up, that's from this quadrant up, that's two quadrants. If I go from back here and carry it across my body, that's a carry. So think about that when you're officiating. If they went across their body with the ball in their hand, it's a carry, it's a lift. It's just a simple blow your whistle, give a carry, give a point. So, there you go. So here's a couple. I'm going to see if I can see it here. I think it's back right there in the back row. She two hands and opens it. If I can find the volume, I will. There we go. So back row, that was a former supervisor of ours like four years ago. She two hands and that's a lift. You'll see that a lot. Another lift is right there. Open hand, he just goes like this. That's a lift or a carry. So what you see there is you, you see that first touch. This actually goes into the spike rule. So he goes to spike it, and it's tipped back over. He's fine with what he did. This one, I think, was actually called for the lift. Here's another one. That one was called right there on the kid in white. I'm not sure if that was much of a lift or a carry. I would probably let this one go. Because he was up here and he's tapped it. Really what you want to watch for is does the ball come to rest? If it comes to rest, or for a prolonged time, then we're going to go ahead and hit that with, with a whistle. All right, what's a service violation? When you're serving your body and your foot crosses the back line. In, on the ground or in the air? Um, on the ground. So if they do a jump serve, they throw it up, they do a jump serve, they can cross that line. But, and as long as they hit it before they land. But if they go, and I'll show one here in a second, and they hit it and they touch that line, it's a violation. You also have five seconds to serve the ball once it's blown. Um, you can toss it up and down once. So here it is. Watch the server right here. Right in the middle of the thing, we didn't call it, we didn't see it. So she goes to serve it, right on the middle of that line. It's tough, there's only one of you, but you have to be watching that line. If they start way, the, way back, you're good to go to go with it. Screening, I'm not worried about this. Um, 
Serving all the players must be within the boundary lines. Typically this isn't a problem. I'm not worried about screening because we don't see that all that often. Violations in, is it in or out? What constitutes in for sand volleyball on the, on the court? If it touches the line or is inside the box. Touches the line or is inside, no. inside the sand yeah. in, the, in the lines. What else? What about a tip? If it's tipped, that it is in. If I go to block it and it tips my fingers, it's out on me and not the other team. So just remember that. It would then be a tipped ball and the point would go this way. We don't have antennas. Yeah. But you're right. If it hits the antenna, it's out of play. Um, if there's a double fault, for some reason, two people come down crossing the line, you replay that point. Try to figure out who does it first. You get three hits max, um, simultaneous contact equals one contact and any player can do it. So if we go, both go up to block it, no and I do, and it hits between us, that's a simultaneous hit. Or if we both go to dig it at the same time and it hits both of us, it's one hit and then either one of us can go play it. You're not going to judge he hit it 55% and I hit it 45% so I have to go play it, not him. We're not going to do that. That happens rarely. I don't know if this, there we go. This one I think is a, yeah, this is out. So what she did, just blows her, she didn't blow her whistle on this one, but you just blow your whistle and give the point. And we'll show this how you do it down there. Um, yes, you possibly can get hit in volleyball, as you can see in this up referee. You just kind of got to have your head on the swivel. I worked in grad school. Somebody, some, one of our officials decided to watch the ball like this. And as he was looking like this, somebody went to go set the ball and it was coming towards him and popped him right under the chin. He took two steps back and hit the table as he fell. So the toughest thing is you don't need to watch the ball when it's in the air. When it's spiked and hits the ground, that's when you need to know. So your eye should really never go above the net unless you're judging the play because you don't have to worry about anything up high. Playing in the net, the team may play the ball out of the net as long as they still have hits to use. If they can play it out of the net we have, as loose it is, as it is, good luck to them and all the power to them. Um, watch for lifts. It should be lifts as the ball uh, will be lower than normal. I tell you what, Jessica didn't read this very well. Uh, watch for play over the center line and watch for players touching the net. Let's see, I think this is a play out of the net. So that one was just hits the net. That's fine. They, if they can play it, that's, that's okay. And the ball can hit the net on the serve as well, which I think is probably coming up. But maybe not. So if it hits the net on the serve, we play it as long as it makes it over. But if it doesn't, it's just a violation. The other team gets it. As I said, you play in cut rig, four, man, or four players, two and two. Start with three, two and one. A correct team touches the ball three times, they need to have one of each gender involved. If it's twice or once, those rules go out the window. The order must alternate male and female. Um, if, they are th if it's three players, they will have back-to-back -back genders. So if they have four, it's every other. This one just shows, this video just shows you have two guys in a row and three girls in a row, which is not legal there would have to be a female between the two males. So they just, they just didn't play it right. And if, if you do get yourself in this situation, just correct it before the serve. Realistically, it's the serve has to alternate because they can go anywhere on the floor once, once it's served. Any questions about the rules so far? Sportsmanship. I've not had an issue with sand volleyball or volleyball in my eight years being here. Please don't be the first people to do that. But we're going to go over sportsmanship. You rate them one through five. Five means they're the best of the best. One means you probably should have thrown out the entire team. There are two ends of the spectrum. You'll honestly be between threes and fours. Five means they did absolutely nothing wrong, which is fine. Fours is normal. Three is they gave you a little bit of lip. Twos means you probably threw somebody out and you need to do paperwork. One means they kicked everybody out. So that's, that's our sportsmanship rating as we go through here.
If you have a two or a one, you need to do paperwork. You will have yellow and red cards to give out. We made sure we had those ready to go. If you give a yellow card, you're typically at a three. You give a red card, you're at a two. So if you throw somebody out of the game for whatever reason, they're at a two and you need to do paperwork. So this slide really doesn't change from any training that I give you. So what you want to know is you want to know what the player's upset about. If they're yelling at you for some reason, take a second and figure out why they're yelling at you. If they're telling you you suck, that's one thing. They're telling you that sucks, that's a different thing. They attack you personally, you gotta go. You're horrible is different than that's horrible. Because now they made it personal versus that's just a bad call. I work baseball, I work basketball. If you don't know how many times people said I, that's horrible versus I'm horrible, it's probably about the same. But they're attacking the call and not you. So know what they're mad about. And we'll talk about the, what I call the five steps of handling our conflict or the couple steps of handling conflict. If they drop an F-bomb, it's an automatic yell card, no questions. Inevitably somebody's going to go, they're going to miss a spike or hit the ball in the net and go mm, really loud and you're going to have to address it. If they're just mad at themselves because they suck, let them suck and be mad at themselves. Just say, hey, watch the language. I am not one, I, I'm not saying I'm the most profane person, but I do swear. But I'll be like, hey, watch the language for me. I didn't berate, berate him, I didn't belittle him, I just said, hey man, watch the language. He starts doing it more and more often, I'm like, dude, we had the conversation. You're going to make me take another step here and you're not going to like it. Still not berating or belittling him, I'm just like, dude, yeah, watch your language. Um, if they attack or bait, bait an opponent, um, then they, they're gone. So. That's an automatic. So the first thing is the quiet word. Like I just said, he uses a swear word, hey man, work with me. Sometimes if they get close enough, he just subs off because his teammates say, you suck, you need to get out of here. Hey, watch the language for me. And that's all I say. If it's a public warning and they're coming at you, like that's, that's terrible. That's really bad. All right, I've heard you. We're done. I don't say one more word. You're out of here. Because if I say one more word and you're out of here and you say a word back to me, what do I got to do? No. Yeah, and if I don't, then all of a sudden I'm backpedaling and you're like, oh, now I'm on him. I got him. So if I, if I say that's enough, that still leaves the door open for him to ask questions, but if he starts coming back at me, like we had the conversation, I just said that's enough, here's the yellow card, here's the red card, whatever it is. Um, captain's meeting, I say do this early. If you have to get the captains together, be like, hey, your team needs to watch their language, your team needs to watch their language. Don't be talking across in that. If they do, handle the situation. And then a technical file is actually a yellow card, and then a uh, red card is the ejection. You don't have to go through all the steps. I dropped the F bomb, and I said, you're effing terrible. And you're like, hey, will you please work with me? That <laughs> quiet down. And I'm like, all right, OK. And then I'm like, you're really effing terrible. And you're like, all right, I had enough. And then I keep going, no. And they say that to you, he going, see you later. But do it in a manner that you're comfortable with. For the three that are in the back of the room, and, and now Danny, the first time you eject somebody is, is, is like the weirdest thing you ever have to do because you're like, see you later, here's a red card, and you're like, oh, shoot, what do I do now? Because now he's really pissed off at you. And it happens. Like I said, sand volleyball, if there's a yellow card given, I would be shocked. But you need to be ready that if it does happen to get this, sorry for my people that are in Greek organizations, Greek night's usually the night that it gets most heated. Or if there's two teams in the same res hall that don't like each other. I haven't seen that one yet, but usually it's the Greek Knights. Uh, I say draw your line in concrete, not sand, because you can erase that line in sand and keep backing up. So I said, here's my line. You cross it, you'll pay the consequences. So try to keep that line where you know where it is. So, officiating fundamentals. I took out the upper referee because we don't have the upper referee. It's all down referee. You're by yourself. I don't think we're going to have two people, but if we do, one's on each side and you have similar responsibilities. So, you whistle for every serve, dead ball, timeout, anything. Boop, bring in the serve. Ball goes out, out of, out of bounds, ball lands in, ball's tipped, there's a violation on the net. Those are pretty much what you're going to have to use. Lift, thank you Danny. 
don't worry, I'm going to let Jessica get to her uh, mechanics here before we give the test out. Um, signal the foul, award the point. So it's whistle to bring, begin the serve, watch the play. Anything happens, net violation, give the point. Out of bounds, give the point, whatever it is. And then you have to write it down. It's going to be tough, you're going to be holding a clipboard. You're basically going to be like, clipboard in this hand and be like, out of bounds. And then, yeah, it's going to look weird. Do the best you can with what you have. Don't set the clipboard down. We don't have them attached to the poles or anything, so you're going to be holding it the entire time. You get a little creative, I'm fine with that. Be like, mm, begin serve, that's fine. However you want to do it. But make sure you uh, announce the score every time. Subs come in, subs go on in. Make sure you have enough people come out, we're good, begin the serve. And as I said, confirm, confirm the score. Eight serving 12, or 12 serving eight. So whoever's serving is the first one. It's going to be tough because you have to keep score. And they're going to ask you every time, what's the score? Questions on that? That's your positioning in mechanics. Well, positioning. Jessica's going to go over mechanics here in just a second. All right, so Jessica's going to come up here. She's going to do mechanics. The mechanic sheets are in the back if you want to pass them out. She's going to give you a quick tutorial in mechanics here so we can take the test. And then when we go outside, she's going to do whistle blowing and then add mechanics in as well. Yeah? So like you said, no, like bracelets, but like this is a string, and like if I want to take it up, I'd have to like cut it off. So like cut it off. Mm-hmm. Sorry to the boyfriend, girlfriend, best friend, <laughs> anybody. It, it's, it's a tough thing, but yes, it would have to go. It is on and live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go over the pertinent ones and not the obscure ones like screen. Mm -hmm. that is, that. <laughs> After today, everyone's going to have to go home, practice this in the mirror. Okay, you're only going to use maybe like the same five ones every time, especially because it's sand volleyball. You only do so much. An important one. Lift. Can everyone do that with me? Lift. That's good. And every time there's a point, you're going to point to the side that got the point. Make sense? So, right, left court got the point. Left. Right point. Right court got the point. Right. Easy. Does anyone know what this one means? No? No. <laughs> out. Yes, out of bounds. So you're going to go beep, out, point to the court that got the point. Okay? To start the serve, you're going to go boop, serve, and then they're going to hit the ball, hit the ball, hit the ball, volley, and they're going to be like out, point. Or it's going to be in, other point. You're going to point with whatever hand the ball hits the court on. So it's going to be like in, point. So if the ball hits on the right court, what are y'all going to do? And then what? Good. It's very simple. And then, okay, ones you really got to look out for are like line violations or net violations. So if it's on the line, it's considered in. For those of y'all who aren't familiar with volleyball. So you're going to go in, point, same side, everything like that. Okay? You can use the same hand if you're like holding something like holding your pencil and paper or clipboard or whatever, but it's preferred to use opposite hand. Okay? And for line violations, you're gonna go like this. Can everyone do it with me? Because you're gonna be like right in front of the net, so it's gonna be like line violation, point. Okay? Alright. What's your name? Noah. Noah, will you do a lift? Yeah. Okay, another common one is a touch. That's when, okay, if a ball is volleying, someone touches it and then it goes out. It's their other team's point because they touched the ball because it went out. Does that make sense? Okay, I think we're going to do some examples later on. That's going to be touch, point. Whatever team got the point, you're going to do a touch with that hand. So it's going to be like this if it's on the left side. Really, that one's really common too. You want to make sure you're not doing out because that's the opposite. Okay. We're going to want to look out for, especially for co ec teams, you can't have the same gender hit the ball three times if you're, they're hitting three times. They can hit twice if it goes over, but they can't hit three times in a row. So it can't be girl, 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 or boy, boy, boy. So if you're going to do that, then it's going to be two hits or four hits or three hits or whatever you're going to call it. 
So everyone, you have to hit the ball three times, make it over, or two or one or whatever. Four hits, everyone do that. And then point. And then two hits, and then point. Okay, pretty basic. Um, generally for serving, they're not gonna let the ball bounce, but they're allowed to, because for saying it's not gonna really bounce back up. They're gonna do serve. It's really simple stuff. Is there anything I'm really leaving out? When, we'll actually practice this outside. We'll give you a whistle, you'll practice, begin serve. The biggest thing is to keep it high. I'm five foot eight on a good day. So <laughs> when I do my mechanics, I try to keep them high. I'm not like, whistle, whistle, high bones. No, I keep it up here so that people can see it. Like you said, you're gonna have a clipboard in your hand, more likely, we're gonna try to make sure you have a clipboard. So when you do out of play, you have that clipboard in your hand, you're gonna be like this. Out. It happens. Begin serve, use this hand and hold it in here and then put it back in your hand this way. Or this way. And then however you want to do it. So that's gonna be the toughest thing is trying to find your style with the clipboard. But make sure that you keep them high. Because nothing tells me lazy mechanics like this. Nobody saw it, nobody heard it. But if you like begin that serve, yeah. That's the biggest thing. And generally after every point, you're going to want to call the score afterwards. So, Because there's no scoreboard outside. You're the only one with the score in their hand. And they'll try and keep it in their heads. And they'll try and argue with you. So every time, just say the score. Like four serving two. If whoever serving has four. Does that make sense? Okay. We'll go over this again outside when she actually does the whistleblowing part of this. I show you the mechanics. You can be taking the test. It has mechanics in it. So that's why I give this to you out front. Up front. So, all right, if your name's not up here, please go ahead and put your name in an email because that's how I'm going to send it to you. That's going to be our test. We're also going to take the hepatitis B test, which is going to happen here in about 40 seconds whenever my 